first things to know about Sketchlist is you create designs by working with virtual boards, three-dimensional boards. They have sizes, they have, they have uh, colors and, and grain. The big task is how, how do you organize those? And we have this nest of, let's call them containers, uh, that, that are used for, for organization. That's their, that's their function. The highest level of organization, the most comprehensive, is, is, the, is the project. And, and that's what you're making. The project can be anything. Uh, I think the smallest I've ever seen was a jewelry box. The biggest I, I've ever seen was um, a person somewhere in France had a contract to build a bicycle storage building for a train station. And it was really quite large. And he did it in Sketchless. So, and everything in between. I mean, I've seen a fair amount of people who, uh, you know, who will do their basement and, and do the drawings and Sketchless, that sort of thing. The next level of organizing uh, or sort of coming down on that would be the uh, would be the assembly, and there's two ways to uh, create to insert it. Well, there are three ways to insert an assembly, and to insert an, an assembly, use this icon up there, and it's just titled Add Object, and then your choices are. Add an assembly, which is starting from scratch, just, just an empty assembly. Just put that in, and there it goes. So I'm going to just delete that. My second choice is um, I'll go this way from the library. And I have a, a library uh, full of objects, which, and these are pre existing. These are things that I had built, or maybe somebody, uh, you know, contributed uh, to me. And the idea is once you create your assembly precisely the way you want to build it, you can save it in, in the library. My thinking is that when I, when I do this, I usually make several library entries for everything I'm making where, I, where I'm building up logic, logically. So the first thing I would enter, as you see here, uh, is just the box. There's a 12 inch cube box um, and it says face frame. It, what that means is there's room for a face frame. There's no face frame there, uh, it, or maybe there is. And then the next one I saved, I put a door on here and I saved it with, with the door. So if I'm making something that I'm going to reproduce this and modify it for, for um, my use, I can take that or take this and, and it's, gives me different stages of development. I can save some time by doing that. So that's the second way of inserting something. And then finally is the cabinet wizard. And here's, here's, here's the thinking behind that. If you're just adding an assembly, and I shouldn't say just, if you're adding an assembly and you're building it from scratch, uh, that's going to take a certain amount of time and effort. And that's fine. One of the sort of claims to fame about uh, Sketchlist is that you have the ability to work on a board by board basis and uh, build whatever you want, you know, uh, like that. On the other hand, if you wanna just get started real quick, you can go to the library and take something you've made before and bring it in. Now with that option, you don't have as much control. So if I build um, a cabinet with three quarter inch plywood, for example, and I have some call to make a, a box with five eight, eighth inch plywood, uh, that's kind of tedious to do with the library because in Sketchless, everything really related to something else in the design. And uh, so sometimes what seems to be a really small change uh, kind of cascades into to many changes. So to come in between those two, um, ends of the spectrum, board by board or, or complete project or assembly, is the, the cabinet wizard. The way cabinet wizard works is uh, somewhat like the library, you get to pick uh, an object. And over time, I'll be adding objects here. Or you can actually purchase objects. We sell a, a desk, a bed, 
um, I don't know what else, a bookcase and, and so forth. But if I wanted, and I'll use this for, for the beginning of our discussion tonight, I, I wanted to make uh, just a basic cabinet. So if I pick box with shelf and, and select that as the cabinet, there's what I'm making. And here are, here's the control you have over the parameters which define this, this, this shelf unit. So the first one is assembly size. If I click that, say, well, okay. Say I wanna make it a bit wider. I'm gonna make that 60 and then click. And, and there it is. And, and you would expect that from a design program that, that you can do that. And, and again, you should be able to do that. That's not going to be a big deal. But where it becomes a bigger deal, in my example before about the five inch board thickness, and, and I'll just do it with the backboard just once. So, you know, the backboard's three quarters of an inch, which for a lot of people is a really thick backboard. So if we wanna make that a half inch or a quarter inch, I just say, well, no, now it's gonna be a quarter inch and you're not gonna see it because it happens so quick. But if I hit, enter the value, hit the uh, routine key, you see this snapped. And what that snap did was it turned that backboard into a, th a quarter of an inch thick it kept the back of that board to the back of the assembly, which I think is 24 inches. And what that means is any board that is touching the backboard, these sides, bottom, top, and shelf, they have to become a half inch deeper. So they're still butting up, done automatically in the, in the cabinet wizard. Now, what else do we have? You can, you have some ways of saying, all right, Say I wanted to accommodate a, a toe kick here. And so it, it, it does the necessary adjustment. Now it won't actually cut the notch for the toe kick because in the cabinet wizard, you're working on the, on the, you're not working at the board detail level. And I'll show you how to cut that toe kick maybe in a bit. And then we have these, these um, uh, ideas of setbacks. And uh, that just means I want to put some additional space somewhere so I can uh, so I can add in. So if I wanted to, I could say, I'm, I'm gonna push the front back three inches because, because I wanna overhang the, the top board. So I just say that, and you, you see how that jumped. Well, it, again, you won't really understand what happened until we go and put that into the, into the project. Now what you see is there is, so now I'm in the next level of the, of the nest. I'm in the, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm working on an assembly. I'm still at the project level because you see the floor of the project and you'll see that, and then I'm still at the project level. But if I go and click that, now I'm in the assembly level. If I'm at the project level, I can't work in the assembly level. I can only work with assemblies, not inside of assemblies. Uh, much the same as if when I put a drawer in here, I, I have if I want to build out that drawer and make a you know box in there, I have to be in the drawer level to do that. And and that's what this ladder is about. And, and I'll show you that in a second. But just to follow the thinking on on what that front set was. So the front set initially, if you you might not remember, but there was an inch and a half uh, spacing for the face frame. And in addition to that, I wanted to add three inches for say a crown molding. Well, what, what that's done is that that's changed the depth of this board without changing the depth of the assembly and it, uh, and it gives that flexibility. So here's, here's, here's the assembly. So we've, 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 we've have the project level, we have the assembly level, 